tell your story in the cut. Because, you know, that is where the story actually lives. It lives in between the juxtaposition of two scenes. It, um, it, it, it lives in the transition of those two scenes. So it's within the cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I think you've the, said the that. other thing I, I like to talk about is telling the story in the cut. Telling the story in the cut is is simple. Um, it's it's a little simpler than than I think a lot of people make it. And um, I, um, people um, tell writers and they tell filmmakers and they tell directors, you know. Um, you know, show not tell, show not tell, show not tell, show not tell. And that can be kind of really confusing because it's like you listen to those words and you're like, okay, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> you know, what does that mean really? Show not tell. Okay, um, how do you show a screenplay? I don't understand what that means. You know, it's like, it's like, and so like when you're, you're a writer and you're like, you're hitting yourself with those words like, oh, I don't get it. Uh, uh, I'm telling intrinsically by writing it. Uh, you know, <laughs> and so it can be really confusing. But see, what it actually means is tell your story in the cut. Because, you know, that is where the story actually lives. It lives in between the juxtaposition of two scenes. It, um, it, it, it lives in the transition of those two scenes. So the period between those two scenes is where all the information of your story is uploaded. So all the exposition that you need to make in your story can be implied. It can be all implied. You don't actually have to say the exposition like, like I would say like what? 70% of your, your exposition does not have to go into your script. It can be all in, the, in your cut. Because all you have to do is like, is, is set up a, um, um, a visual cue with an action and then cut to the end result of that action to the aftermath and just by doing that just by putting one picture here all right and then putting the end result of that picture right over here you've downloaded your or you've uploaded your exposition done <laughs> you know so like the example i use is like is is the um is the girl like you know at the at the bar, um, at the at the hotel bar, and the bartender comes up to her and gives her a drink, and then signals towards a man at the end of the bar <laughs> who waves at her because he sends her to drink, uh -huh. and then cut to later they're in the in the in a hotel hallway, stumbling into her hotel suite, <laughs> kissing, and we know what happens. <laughs> you know, we don't need to know what they discussed at the bar. We don't need to know what their conversation was. We don't know, need to know all the details in between. We, we get it. We get it. And it's, it's a really, really simple technique. It, it, and, not, and, 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 and there are a lot of filmmakers um, and writers that don't avail themselves of it. Um, and there are a lot of writers that do. Um, number one on the list is Kenneth Lonergan, who is... A brilliant writer, and um, he knows exactly how to do that. Um, and um, yeah, William Goldman also knew exactly how to do that. So, but but yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's a simple thing, you know. Uh, um, more people need to do it. That's all. <laughs> how did you get better at telling your stories within the cut? Sometimes it was hard one um, because um, I had this tendency, I think like a lot of new writers do, to um, want to fall in love with their language and to hold like some kind of like chunky like diner scene with like, 
you know, some interesting characters talking and like throwing some colorful banter back and forth and like, ooh, how interesting this is. And <laughs> when, when, when I started to realize that it was unnecessary and that not only was it unnecessary, that it was, it was, um, it was shooting myself in the foot as far as it, uh, as far as um, grabbing the intent, the attention of readers. Um, it, it's not to say that those characters may not have been doing or saying anything that was um, interesting or fun or anything. It was dropping the ball, you know, in the ball game as far as like making making my work stand out for others because essentially what i learned is that in the the in the long and short of it um readers aren't interested in um your scene they don't care about your scene they care about the story you're telling them that's what they care about <laughs> they don't care about your scene they care about the story you're telling them. So if they fall in love with your story, they'll, they'll, they'll fall in love with your script. They're not going to fall in love with your scene. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're not in it to fall in love with your scene. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> Although there is something very charming about those diner conversations. I can't, I know, I, I've, enjoy seeing them you know and then you've got marge the waitress and, all right what'll it be and then you know then they she leaves and then they're trying to like talk you know so that well, she doesn't hear well it, that, that's a whole other <laughs> i mean that's a whole other discussion it depends on where it is and, and it depends on how you do that sort of thing um um is is one thing and you know like for example my my favorite my one of my favorite diner conversations of course, is because it's charged. You charge a scene. You charge a scene by telling it, um, um, by telling your story in the in, in cuts. All right, by by loading um, your story like that. Um, heat. Yes, excellent. You 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 charge. Everything is very very um, sparse and very. Um, um, it, it, there's not much going on in heat other than the the action, um, the reactions, um, the, the the setups for the heist. It's it, it's very lean um, heat, and then it gets to that diner scene between Pacino and um, and De Niro, and it means everything. That conversation, that conversation means everything and that's how you load those scenes by by you know telling your story and then you come to a scene where there is you know more or less you know a standoff if it's not a metaphorical standoff um, it's not emotional standoff um, that's how you tell stories in general you know um, you can't have that standoff in every scene of your script. Otherwise, you're confused about what you're doing. Sure, and in keeping it lighter, I, the 80s, 90s sing-along scene, which I don't know why they used for so long, mm -hmm. where something's on the radio, somebody turns on a stereo, and now the whole group's singing together. Mm -hmm. That seems to be lost, and I'm happy that that's the case. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't mind no? stuff like don't, that. Okay. I don't, I don't mind anything that's experimental like that, as long as everything else is tight. You know, um, you can do anything experimental, but if everything else is tight, it, it, it'll, it will, um, it will like rise to the top. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm a, I'm a personally, you know, I mean, it's, it's not my favorite film. Okay. But I am a sucker for that Daryl, 
the, the Hall and Oates scene in 500 Days of Summer. <laughs> okay, all right. I am a sucker for that scene. Because <laughs> I've been that guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I've walked out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Swinging like that. Okay. <laughs> so I've been that guy. So I'm a sucker for, you know, so I mean, like, so if you do it right, you know, you, it, 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 it flies. It flies.